I think, Brennan, we have to uh, at least talk about this. Um, you guys, if you follow the news, if you're alive, uh, if you've been following this Twitter thing the way we have, uh, you know what's going on with our friend Chris. I'm not, you know, that when these situations, people in Hollywood tell you what to say. And, um, I, I, and I said to Brennan, what we can do is tell the truth. And I'm not going to sit here. I'm a man and I define myself on how I respond to these situations in real time when the pressure's really on. And so this is what I'll say. Um, I always knew Chris as a ladies man. I have never, and I'm going to say this, I have never seen or heard of him doing anything illegal ever. Um, this is as shocking to me as I'm watching this happen. I don't know what to think and I don't know what to say. I don't. Um, but I have, I'm going to say it again. I have personally never heard or seen him do anything illegal. That's all I can say. And right now I have to believe that because he's still a friend and, and, and it may be unpopular to say that, but I, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to do. And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be some, uh, I, I, I just think it's an impossible situation and, uh, I'm, I'm just at a loss. I'm at a loss and I'm praying, I'm praying that, um, what I'm hearing isn't true. Maybe that's the best way to put it. I can't talk. It's just, you know, it's like, talk. it's a weird thing because I said to, to Brennan, I said, it's like, um, you know, it's, it's like watching someone die or something. And also, it's I just, just I, <clears throat> You know, I have, we I haven't. Just, what's important is that we haven't spoken to Chris. No, and I'm we've shark. never been. We've never been on the road with him. I, you know, never. I was on the road with him um, about 14 years ago once um, when he was, uh, you know, just beginning. But I've never been on the road with him, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to think, and I don't know. And that's what's so frustrating. It's. I'm just sad. Yeah, I'm sad. I don't. So anyway, yeah. Sometimes that's the best thing to say. Is to say I don't know what to say, and I'm just um, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's a it's it's a fucked up thing. I can't talk. Fuck. Well, that's appropriate. That's appropriate right now. You can just you can just pray that uh, <clears throat> that nothing's true. Because no matter what the facts are, whatever comes out, I'm as shocked as anyone. I'm hurt. I'm mad. I'm. I'm fucking mad, man. I'm mad at him. Okay. okay. Um, this is going to be a very difficult podcast to do. Um, because um, last week, um, a friend of ours um, gotten, um, he's in trouble. Mm. He's in big trouble. And um, it's it. I'm, I'm conflicted, and this is. I'm just trying to be honest. I, you know, I, you know. I, if you're not conflicted, like you're not, you're not a feeling human mm -hmm. being. You're a yeah, robot. I, yeah, I think I, that I'm, it's. I here's what I'm. Cause just let me finish my yeah, sentence. So here's where the conflict lies, um, and there really isn't a conflict when it comes to like um, right and wrong. When it comes to right and wrong, there is no conflict. Um, the news of my friend in trouble Tuesday was as shocking and devastating to me as it was to his fans and as it was to the people hearing it for the first time. I've heard it for the first time. I, um, I've said this before on Bad Friends. I don't know what I don't know. Um, I've read the accusations and I've read all the things online and um, he's a friend of mine and I love him. His behavior I don't condone and I refute and I think it's, it's bad. It's bad behavior. And but I can still have both things can be true. I think no, what you're not, trying to say is you can still have love 
for somebody, for all the things, for all the good things that you know about them and still absolutely despise and hate what he's accused of. Like, yes. That's, that's what, what I'm you're trying to say. Like, you're, that's what I, th yeah, those two things are true. So yeah, yeah. 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 Um, What's so funny? Because I said it wrong. You I don't, fuck? Know, I don't know how you said it. I thought hey. it was right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and it's also it's like it, it's it's tricky, you know. Like I, I I never ever want to be in his position where it's like Oof. everything you say, anyone can like punch a hole through. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's a, it's a it's a very delicate, also very serious. Like those allegations are serious. They're serious allegations, and um, it's I don't like it. They really make me sad, and I'm um. This whole situation makes me sad. Mm. And um, I feel like I lost a friend. Mm. And I don't want that to be true, you know? But but I, I've talked to a lot of also, a lot of female comics. You know, a lot of them um, I've talked to because I wanna get their input and I wanna talk to them about the situation and um, listening to them and um, I have to be mindful about the community, the comedy community. I have to be mindful about um, the people that were hurt by him. And I have to be sympathetic. And I, I, if I lost a friend, it's hard to say, but mm. so be it. I mean, that's where I'm at. That's the honest and utter truth of it. I hate this. I hate it. I hate this week. Last Tuesday, something happened that was um, just as shocking and terrifying to me. Yeah, um, same. I have a. I want people to know that I don't know what I don't know. Um, the news that you received Tuesday is the same exact new information. That, that we, we received. That we, we received. Yeah, we didn't. We were not privy to any of that stuff and did not know. And, and we I, found out when you found out. I think that um, that kind of behavior is abhorrent. I resent it, and um, it's not good. No, it's it's it was a t it was it was um, it was awful and shocking and very uh, quite frankly taken us all aback. I mean, you, we called each other and, you know, you sit in disbelief because you, you don't know, we don't know this stuff and we're finding this stuff out at the same time people are and people are throwing, been, throwing around questions to everybody. Terrible. We don't know. I haven't, um, we haven't slept. I mean, and it's what just, we know now yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is we're, uh, it's really, it's really, it's really disappointing. It's really sad. And I think all we can say is, uh, we hope, we hope he gets help. And that's it. And that's all we can say. I mean, I, I, I like, you know. That's all we yeah. can say. Yeah. But we want to continue to do our bad. Because it's, it's kind of a hot topic right now and, and you're kind of, kind of close to it. Um, I just want to hear your thoughts on, on, on Chris D'Elia, man. Um, I'm a big fan of his. I'm a big fan of yours. I'm a big fan of a bunch of comedians like yourself. But I don't want to believe it, dude. I really don't. Um, you know, it's. I, I feel like that that crying old man at the the WWE whatever thing. He's like, it's still real to me. Damn it, you know. That's how I feel. So maybe try helping me feel a little bit better, Theo Vaughn. Yeah, I want to thank you for the call, brother. I, I appreciate it, and um. You know, a lot of calls have come in about this, a lot. And um, and I wanted to wait to speak on it until I was here at the podcast and until we were all together. Um, you know, I just want to say, you know, how horrible this, this, this was for the girls who felt like they couldn't say anything. You know, how horrible this must have been for the girls who felt like they didn't have a voice you know for a period of time that they couldn't you know speak up for themselves uh, out of fear or or 
you know, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure what they were, everything they were going through. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, I'm happy that they found a voice to, to speak. I'm happy that they found the courage to speak up. I also, um, I wrote some things down that I want to be, that I want to say. So I want to be real clear, you know, cause my mind it's, you know, I don't know. I'm not always the most clear, you know, I sometimes get real brackish in, uh, in my brain and, and, um, so I just want to be clear, man. Uh, so I just want to say that I know that there was a video pulled out of a podcast that may have given the vibe that I had prior knowledge um, of anything predatory that was going on or occurring. Uh, I never knew anything predatory uh, occurring. Uh, I had I have never seen Chris with any underage women ever. I've never heard him. I've never heard him communicating with any underage women. I've never spoken with him about anything like that. Ever. I've never heard him speak with anyone about anything like that. You know, I would never condone that type of behavior. I would never laugh about it. Um, you know, podcasting, you know how it is. We just talk, been talking for years. And we give each other, a, you know, a good rough time about stuff. And <clears throat> and Chris and I have always had this, you know, to me anyway, this is my perception that we've always had this, you know, we give each other a rough time about things. And um, and his fans are called babies. And, you know, I know he has a lot of younger fans. Um, and my brain just goes like a. You know, it's like a guy without legs in a, you know, in a damn avalanche contest or something. You know, it just, I'm just, it just goes sometimes. It's a lot of rambling. It's what a lot of podcasting is. Um, but I never had any knowledge or evidence or idea or reason to suspect that Chris was ever doing anything that was that was wrong, and I would never condone anything like that. Um, you know, and I hope that Chris gets the help that he needs, and uh, you know, and I always ho hope that. You know, I always hope that anybody gets the help that they need, and um. And it's heartbreaking, you know, it's heartbreaking because I was also a fan. Um, you know, um, and, and, and that's all I'm going to say about that. What else? I, I, I know it's hard to, to talk about stuff and to share more. Well, let's let's get through this episode, man. Gang. All this all this shit came out. The crazy shit came out was like him allegedly. I got through allegedly, and I and I contacted Chris because I I was like, yo, you gotta tell me what the fuck the deal is because some of this shit is weird. And um, it was underage girls, right? Yes. Allegedly, he was contacting underage girls, and um, I contacted him. I was like, bro, what is this thing? Why are you commenting on some girl's picture where she posts some people in a fucking school bus? Like that, pretending you, is hilarious. Yeah, and then he was that like, "Defends me as a comedian." So then he said that, that he said that girl told me she's 24. I have screenshots and everything. I'm organizing everything, and I'm gonna you know release it. And there's gonna be articles coming out. I'm like, all right. Tricky thing with with, and then there's another one where there was like an email exchange where a girl says she was 17, and then like a month later she hits him back and he's like, "Come over and make out." And I asked him about it, and he didn't really give me any answer about that one. Yeah. So I don't know. And I was like, bro. You, is there some more context here? Like, what's going on? Did he say, did he say anything? I think he's holding all his cards until he can put together a full, uh, like a full rebuttal and put everything out all together on his podcast. I said, you better hurry up, bro, because <laughs> every day it just seems worse, son. Yeah, but you, so here's the tricky thing: you guys put together an entire crowd work special in a week. So 
Dalia can't defend <laughs> himself as not a rapist in a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just screenshots, dog. <laughs> Ain't no fucking music. Ain't no intro you got to cheat. <laughs> Yo, but the tricky thing with him is that, like, I don't think he would deny he's a wild, like, womanizer. Yeah. So the tricky thing is he's got to basically go, all right, I'm a piece of shit to women, but I didn't fuck underage women. I think that's all you got to do, to be honest with you. I think most of us would be like, yeah, okay, at least you'll fuck underage women. Yes, but it's a tricky thing because it's who's going to come back and like support that. I mean, that was his apology. Was it? TMZ was, look, I have done some foul shit to women, essentially, but this isn't true. None of them were underage. I will do better. I will will continue to do better is always funny. Like, when did you start... Yeah, I mean, continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will continue to do better. I don't want you continuing Stop nothing. Continuing. Yeah. <laughs> well, in fairness to him, I haven't seen really a lot of stuff come out post like 2017, 2018. It seems right. like a lot of the accusations were from prior to that time. Right. So maybe he cleaned up a little like when his life started getting more serious. I don't know. Maybe. Hopefully. That's my hope. I don't know if yeah. that's the case. Yeah, I also just want to see how are you because the way he's texting these girls, this is the thing. There's no concrete proof that I've seen that he knows they're 16 and don't give a fuck, which is tricky. But the way he's texting them, it's like you're talking to a kid almost like. So that's the thing. We it should be illegal to share how we talk to women. <laughs> hey man, son, son, that's son, the son, scariest son, shit potentially. Son, it is he, heartbreaking, bro. <laughs> like they released they released my boy Shab's text, bro, to girls, and I'm reading them shits, and I'm like, man, this is how I sound. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, nah, but it's yo, you sound so corny. Like if I look back uh, at any course, DMs, yo, there's no way to sound cool in a DM. Bro, I think only Trey Songs did that shit. I have read every conversation. Oh, every time I. I read a conversation with a girl I was even like talking to. I'm like, what the fuck? Who yeah. is this guy? So yeah. That's why you got to talk in emojis. If you're talking in emojis, then it's like it could be. And then people start clowning your emoji yeah, choices. Bro. That's how specific people are with how to talk to women. It's like you hear literally people like, look at these corny ass emojis. I thought sunglasses is good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's a good emoji, sunglasses. <laughs> right? Like, honestly, that was my go to. If I didn't have a response when I was emoji. back in the day, DM oh. girl, sunglass emoji. What does that mean? Bitch, I don't know. I didn't have anything to say. I didn't, you didn't know I had nothing to say? <laughs> that's why in person shit is always so much more difficult because you can't just go, well. <laughs> so, yeah. It's like, so what are we? <laughs> Sunny outside, ain't it? Like, how was your date? I don't know. He kept on putting on his sunglasses the whole time, nonstop. So yeah, man, it's it's a wild world out there. Obviously, everybody's been asking us um, what we think. Look, if you have like hundreds and hundreds of girls coming out saying what a piece of shit you are, right? Yeah. To them, probably a piece of shit. Yeah. To women, yeah. right? Um, that being said, that's very different than being a pedophile. Yeah, nobody looking at Chris D'Elia thinking he's a nice guy to women. Right. Like Maybe. I don't know. I never I never really judged prior. You know what I mean? I, I was never, uh, I never really, he never gave me any the attention. The stereotype was, of a good looking white dude who's funny You is, can fuck a lot of girls and not be a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying people would judge him like that. Sure. Maybe it, it, it wasn't, it wouldn't be surprising. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And there could be people listening to this right now that have no fucking clue who Chris D'Elia is and that's sure. fair. Um, but, uh, so, yeah, so the thing was, is like, they are two very different things. And that is something that we need to get to the bottom of. Because yeah. it's not illegal to be a piece of shit to women. Yeah. It's illegal to fuck underage women. Yes. And you go to jail for, yes. and you get beat up, frankly. Yeah. As you should. As you should for fucking underage women. If you're being shitty mm-hmm. to women, that's really on your fan base. Yeah. If your fan base don't tolerate that shit, then they go, fuck this guy. I'm out of here. Yeah. If they do... Then they go, okay, it is what it is. Yeah. I'm sure there are a lot of rock stars that were shitty to fucking women. And people are like, all right, we're cool with that. And then maybe there were some that were shitty women that were, they weren't cool. But that's really up to your fan base yeah. to decide. And then up to your peers if they want to associate. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the fan base don't really know how he deals with. Women. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, why so. would anybody know? I never got that intention. Yeah. You no, know? because you said, like, it's up to the fan base to cancel him if he's, like, shitty Once women. Once they know. But, oh, now you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, once oh, they yeah. know. Okay, like, yeah. that's that's the decision. Yeah. 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 But, um, but yeah, man, I, you know, I don't, I just want to say Chris pedophilia. 
I just wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find. I was trying to find a way to slide it in. I, I, I was just babbling on, trying to find a way to slide it in. I couldn't do it. You know what I mean? Yo, and then Jeff Ross so got in some guy. Me Too heat. You know the roast molester, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> The roast molester in general. The roast molester general. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Some chick who he claims is crazy, right? Getting pretty hot for the roast master right now, huh? (laughs) 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 But that is kind of wild. Like some chick who he claims is crazy is coming for him and she got like receipts. But the receipts are like, look, here's a picture where he was wearing his hat. And now I have the hat. I watched the video that she put out, or at least yeah. a snippet of it. I'm not saying she's wrong, Yo, but not... you be editing this shit on iMovie and like putting a title screen, and it's just like it's just an odd look. Can I be honest with you, bro? And she knows who fucking Jason Stein is, or whatever his name is. Steinberg. That Steinberg. Yeah. Can I be honest with yeah. you, bro? This is a um, it's a story about molestation, right? But it's a story about molestation, and it's just like. I watched a lot of Law and Order SVU. Is like you need to cut the fat. (laughs) (laughs) This shit is fucking twenty minutes long, growing through pictures and that kind of stuff. And it's just like, yo, come on, shorty, come on. Is there anything you learn from comedy? You're in these comedy clubs all the time. You never like this a long setup. (laughs) She's talking about how much she loves comedy from the age of fifteen on. Oh my god, you taking. This guy's head off. Oh my god! He's so Jeff came out. Yeah, <laughs> I was so that Jeff I was came waiting out. for in the middle of the video. When Jeff came out and said she's crazy, she he said he's gonna sue mental health and he's gonna sue her back. And but that wasn't the best response to me too. Akash, what was the best response to a me too? I've been waiting for someone to do this one. Which one? Phase on love. Oh, phase on love, <laughs> son. <laughs> If this, because this is the reality. If they come for you, I'm wondering, right? And that was what I was wondering with Chris, and that's why I text Chris. I was like, "Motherfucker, why aren't you swinging? This is your life. Yeah, like this is your life right now. Legit, your Legit life. Legit, your life. If you go to jail for this, son, it, your life is over. You, know, you want to be the molester in jail? The pretty boy molester? Shit. Fuck it. Shit. Yeah. It's over, yo. I bet you gonna be taking some pictures with your shirt on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there gonna be a lot of shirt off pics <laughs> in jail. So. So there's this girl. Oh, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. When it comes to this kind of like Me Too shit, I'm like, where the fuck are the haymakers? If somebody's coming for your life, yeah. haymakers Bro. on everybody. It's, it's a, a let's go. And low key, if you're not throwing haymakers. It looks a little weird. To me, just because of the way I would act, yes. if I was falsely accused of something. Yeah. The way I would act, go over yeah. the top. I'm going over the top, Mark. <laughs> I'm fighting for my fucking life, like you said. That's it. I'm yeah. in a corner, yeah. boxed in. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. 